Hello and welcome to your weekly briefing for Global Conflict 1. In this video I'll be covering days 88 to 94 and as usual doing my best to document the various political changes that have occurred within this world in that time frame. So I considered adjusting the format of this report ever so slightly and I'll be first reporting from a country level and then zooming in a little bit closer and focusing more on a province level and you know looking at those various political changes that have occurred on those two levels because they're they're both they're different enough to warrant a distinction so starting up here with the scandinavian peninsula you may or may not have noticed that house 2 has been placing a great deal of pressure on that area once again and has flipped uh, norway from house 19 to neutral so most likely either it will be flipped back or House 2 will be taking it over. But that's definitely a change. If we look over here at Russia, it has been flipped from House 19 to House 5. Now according to my source inside House 19, this is due to the fact that the former king of Russia is actually in vacation mode and was monked out of his seat. So House 5 took over in his place. And keep in mind that House 5, of course, is an... A very close ally of House 19 so it's essentially under the same uh, leadership really nothing has changed there even though it is a different house change considering the fact that House 19 isn't actually going to be winning the glory race it doesn't matter that much that House 5 is controlling political capital for them instead if we look down over here at China you can see it has been taken from House 19 by House 12 this according to sources there on the ground is due to the fact to simply fair voting by House 12, which now controls the majority of uh, provinces within that country. If we look over here at the very far east, you can see Japan has switched hands from House 2 to House 13. This is probably the largest push by House 19 in the past week. Uh, of course, it's not House 19 proper, but House 13 is an ally of House 19, and we have seen them really push into Japan quite successfully and the majority of parishes are really controlled by them now. Down here in the Philippines and Indonesia, Indonesia has what I would say has been secured now by House 17 and the Philippines has been secured by House 10. In the past week those were both a little bit, they were in between, a lot of neutral stuff was going on there so it seems to have pretty much solidified in those two houses favor. Focusing over here a little bit more on the Middle East, you can see that House 4 has taken over Iran from House 15. They are both allies, so it's mostly a, a friendly switch of land. Finally, Brazil has flipped from House 10 to neutral. This is most likely due to internal rearrangement or even flag trading and really I don't think has any important bearing on the world this week. Now moving into the governor level of the map. If we take a look over here at Ireland, we can see it has now fully been flipped to House 2. If you might recall last week that Northern Ireland was still in the hands of House 19. Right now House 19 only controls two parishes in there and the rest of that is House 2. So as an update from last week, you may recall uh, two provinces were taken by uh, invading houses, House 17 and House 2. As you can see, the Ural province, and in reference to the Ural Mountains, I imagine, has been reclaimed by House 5 quite successfully, but the Western Russian province is still under the control of House 17. So that, uh, offense was, well, that offensive was ultimately quite successful for House 17. If we move down here, we can take a look at Kazakhstan, and you can see that East Kazakhstan is now under the control of House 17. Uh, West Kazakhstan and Kazakhstan, the country itself, is still under the control of House 19, but this is a recent development in the past week that House 17 has successfully accomplished. When it comes to Mongolia, Western Mongolia has been flipped to House 15 from House 19 in the past week. The thing is, there are actually still players taking advantage of that vacation mode and they're not going to be back until probably the end of this week. So the players that went into vacation mode in the 31st of December were able to use last year's vacation mode. Um, yeah, so they essentially had about 15 days there worth of vacation mode and they won't be coming out of that vacation mode until probably the end of this week. So, you know, you have to take that in consideration when when looking at the map, but we still don't have the fully active player base here. 
Yeah, there's still a lot of people in vacation mode. And that will likely be changing, but of course, if House 19 continues to do worse, we might see a lot of their players uh, just take advantage of those two new vacation modes that they have acquired at the start of 2016 before actually surrendering if you know things go really bad. It's interesting taking a look at it. I don't really know what they are capable of, but from what I'm hearing from the Alliance side of it, it looks pretty solid that they're not going to give up until, you know, they're not going to break the Alliance until House 19 surrenders. So uh, given the recent pushes in the past two weeks, I would have to say that House 19 definitely has uh, taken a hit I don't know if they can really recover. Mostly they're just holding out on their own. There isn't a whole lot else they can do at this point because it's simply there's an overwhelming number of forces against them. They can pressure, they can push into smaller countries, but I mean, it's unrealistic to expect that uh, maybe one fifth of the world is going to take anything really significant from the rest of the world that is united against it. Yeah. Very, very strange. They're good players in all those houses, and and when you look at the amount of money spent, most likely, it is vastly in favor of the alliance against House 19. So take that for what it's worth. Yeah, so I mentioned that uh, House 13 was the major push by House 19 alliance into uh, the allied territory, let's call it. Uh, another area was House 5 successfully pushing into southern Spain and flipping that county as well as well as flipping the uh, province of Frankfurt and Zurich in Western Europe. If I don't get the specific uh, county, province, parish, country level stuff down right, I might be making some mistakes there, some Freudian slips, but uh, I think you get the point when looking at the map there. It just simple, simply boggles my mind at times because you'll have countries that also act as provinces and so on. It's just really confusing. If you're not the one who designed the map probably or you're not actually active in that area of the map, uh, man, one of the things I would have to say about this map is there are just so many countries on it. It is much different from previous maps of even Europe. It didn't have nearly this number of countries on it. So yeah, I sort of feel it's necessary to sort of give that out as, as a disclaimer in advance because I'm probably making a couple of mistakes here on a country province level. I'm calling them counties, I might be calling provinces countries and countries provinces. But you probably don't want to hear me talk anymore about that, so let's just continue onwards. So looking down here in Southeast Asia, we're looking at Vietnam. It was taken from neutral and flip to house 17. If we look over at Nepal, right here, uh, you can see it is once again a neutral province that was, I think it's a province anyway, that was taken by house 20. Bangladesh has been taken from neutral to house 6. Afghanistan has been flipped from house 17 to neutral, as you can see right there. The province of Kashmir has been flipped from house 8 to house 4. Now house 8 is an ally of house 19, so once again, this is a loss for House 19. The UAE has been flipped from neutral to House 15. Over in Central Africa, Nigeria has been flipped from House 19 to House 17. So, you got that going on. I think that pretty much concludes the important land changes in the past week. It should be noted that uh, the alliance against House 19, like I said before, they have at least a 60-day pact in which they all, they all agree to maintain the pressure on House 19 until House 19 surrenders. So none of them, according to this pact, for the next 60 days plans on making peace without you know, consequences from the other houses in that alliance. They, they won't be making peace with House 19. Now the interesting thing is if tensions escalate to the point where one house decides to sort of join House 19 from that alliance because obviously if the other houses are going to uh, put pressure on a house that's violating those those terms their ideal uh, ally in that war of all of a sudden would be House 19 and that would change the dynamic of this world quite significantly because as of this moment uh, House 19 is very very powerful but when you have so many houses against them 
that is really what is bringing them down that's what's slowing their progress otherwise they and i think that's the thing about it a lot of the other houses in the world realize that without uh, without putting this pressure on house 19 house 19 is going to win the map so it's in their own best interest most likely but sometimes house marshals and the like can be, act irrationally when another house does something it really bothers them and in the past we have seen uh, both house 15 and house 9 having troubles with house 10 and recently I've, I think I've gotten good intelligence that house 10 is forming a much stronger bond with house 17 so it would be it might be possible to see a house 17 house 10 alliance versus house 15 and house 9 I'm not sure where house 2 would play into all of that but if anything you would think they might come in on the side of house 15 as before they have stood by house 15 when house 10 attempted to broker uh, sort of an alliance with house 2 against them so you got a lot of interesting possibilities there it all depends upon you know how many loose cannons can you count on in the houses that might actually violate some terms because if one house violates terms and the other houses attempt to if one house in that alliance violates terms and the other houses attempt to punish them what will happen will that house simply fall back in line or will they say you know what we're going to try to help house 19 win and then go against their former alliance altogether it would be it would be quite drastic the change that the, uh, one more house being against the alliance would would create one final thing that i would like to make note of is that dave one and a lot of his players have left house one and in lieu of that uh house one is now currently in a week long ceasefire with house 15. dave one and his players have all joined house 19 which i guess was predictable given the fact that house 19 is fighting against house 15 and house 15 is essentially the sworn enemy of house one or the formerly sworn enemy of house one obviously now if they're attempting to work out a peace deal um yeah apparently that that alliance pretty much failed and it makes sense to consolidate into a larger house it will be interesting to see though which house uh house one ultimately sides with if this peace deal works out i i'm not going to go over the alliances again in this video if you're interested in the alliances if you haven't if you're if you're new to the series and you haven't heard about them go check out last week's video towards the end of it i cover the various alliances it's simply a little bit repetitive to state them every time and it uses up time that well you could be doing better things such as uh, fighting for your house so i think that pretty much covers everything for this week as always thank you very much for watching and i do hope to see you again next week